Are you thinking about making a move to the Portland metro area? And you're wondering what are all the quirks and funny things that you might need to know about when you live here? Well, in today's video, we're gonna talk about 10 things that are kind of funny and kind of quirky and kind of what makes Portland, Portland. And we're getting after it right now. If you're new to our channel, tap the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, because we're dropping videos every week on living in Portland. I'm Ann Stewart, my team member Erica Hagfors and I, we get reach outs all the time from people looking to make the move to the Portland metro area. And if that's you, we'd love to connect with you. All of our information is in the description below. Reach out to us, let's hop on a phone call or a Zoom, and let's get to know what your goals are. All right, we're getting after it. We're gonna talk about 10 things that make Portland weird, quirky, or kind of funny. And the first one should come as no surprise because it has to do with the weather, which you probably already hear about. And that is, you're gonna need a lot of variety of coats. So as you can see today, I'm wearing a jean jacket. It's kind of a mix between light and medium coat because today it's gonna be in the 50s and it's a little chilly in the morning and it's probably in the high 30s, low 40s right now, but later today, it's gonna be closer to the high 50s. So you don't need a heavy, thick jacket. You might need something in between. And one thing we Portlanders do is we have a multitude of jackets. You might have really heavy jackets for the super cold season when it's really in the 30s or 20s. And it's almost like you need ski jackets for that. And then you have the rain jackets because <laughs> we're always getting rain, but sometimes it's warmer outside, but it's raining. So you don't want anything too heavy. And other times it's freezing cold rain. And so you need a really thick jacket in addition to being rain jacket style. And then there's these really great days that pop in in the springtime where you just need something kind of light because it's cool and brisk, but not quite cool enough to wear something heavier. And even in the summertime, you still need something kind of on you because the mornings and the evenings tend to run a little cooler. And then in the middle of the day, it can get a little warmer. And so <laughs> there's just this always this flux of trying to figure out what you're gonna wear here in terms of the season. So just be known, you're gonna have a lot of different types of jackets. And also that includes our layers. You're just gonna have a lot of layers throughout the year, some light, some heavy, but we have a very seasonal type of climate here. So you're gonna need jackets and you know layers for all the different seasons to go through. All right, weird quirk number two is sunglasses. I know we don't get a lot of sun. You see a lot of gray days and winter, but when you do, you need them. So don't buy super expensive sunglasses unless you really are focused on taking care of those sunglasses because many people around here know that you wanna buy the more inexpensive sunglasses and you're probably gonna buy multitudes of sunglasses because for me, it's like I go buy like the 10 to $20 ones. I keep some in my, mostly in my car. I keep some in my purse. I have some looming around the house because you just never know when a sunny day hits and then all of a sudden you're scrambling because you need a pair of sunglasses because stepping outside or walking or driving requires sunglasses and we're so not used to that and it usually takes us by complete surprise that you need to have multiple sunglasses everywhere. And then you need to plan on possibly losing those glasses because you can go weeks or months without needing sunglasses. And then the next thing you know, you can't find the ones that you bought because it's been months, right? And you're not needing them all the time. So make a strategic plan around sunglasses because you're gonna need them and it's gonna be on a day that you least expect it. And you might be driving down the street and go, oh my gosh, the sun is out. So maybe keep a couple in your car, a couple in the house and wherever else you're at, maybe the office or whatnot. But yeah, sunglasses, you need them. You don't know when you're gonna need them, but you're gonna need them. And don't spend a lot of money on them because you're probably gonna have random ones all throughout wherever you're, you know, how you live your life because you're just how it works around here. And number three, we don't use umbrellas. That's right. We are probably in one of the most rainiest climates in the country and we don't use umbrellas. It's crazy, I know. Like I even stop and think about it all the time, but most people who live in the Pacific Northwest we might own an umbrella, but we don't know where it is. And if we have one, we never use it. I think I have one at my back door to take my dog out. Do I ever use it? No. When I go out to show property or go meet up with people, I just, you know, I either have a hoodie on, a hat, or I just let the rain hit me. And that's really Portland. I mean, if you looked at 
anywhere a lot of pedestrians are walking around in the Portland metro area, it is kind of rare to see somebody with an umbrella. And you would think the umbrella companies are making big bucks out here in the Pacific Northwest because we are at the epicenter of rain and that's what we're known for. But truth be told, we don't use them. Um, you sometimes go to like retail stores or restaurants and you'll see maybe like some courtesy umbrellas kind of sitting in the corner somewhere, but nobody's picking them up and using them, or at least rarely. Um, I think my dad might use one the most if I had to think about one person that uses an umbrella, but he's doing it typically to hold it over my stepmother's head as she's walking to the car. But as a true Oregonian, we just don't use them that much. We're pretty well used to you know, the rain hitting our heads. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we are coming and going and we don't have time to put up an umbrella, walk to the store and put it back down. Like it just, and then you have to carry it and it becomes a nuisance. So I think for the most part, it's just a convenience factor because umbrellas are kind of like something you have to manage once you decide you're gonna use them. So yeah, even in the heaviest of rains, I don't typically see a lot of people using umbrellas and it's just this <laughs> weird thing around the Pacific Northwest that we're we're just not into umbrellas. Number four is dogs are just human children. That's right, we really care about our dogs here in the Portland area. They are our babies, they are our fur babies. We absolutely treat them like humans, maybe more so in most cases, but it is a thing here. In fact, I had a client one time who moved from Texas to Portland and she started to work with the, there was a organization that would take all the street dogs in Texas and ship them up to Portland. And she decided to be, you know, to work with them. And she said in Texas, there's tons of stray dogs, but then when they ship them up here to Portland, they all get adopted. Like people just are so into their dogs and adopting and rescuing and all of that. So I think it's warmed my heart because I personally have a rescue dog. I love my dog. Of course, I think he's, <laughs> a human and i see all of my friends and associates who also have dogs and how much they love them so we're big on dog parks we're big on allowing dogs you know at different open facilities retail some restaurants you're just going to see them everywhere people really care about them we have lots of dog parks you have a lot of different dog kind of facilities around so yes we care about our dogs in fact, it's kind of a social thing that if you have a dog and you can connect with somebody else about their dog and, oh, wh where do you go to take your dog on trail walks or, you know, this, that, and the other. So yes, dogs are a really important part of the Portland culture. And uh, I think personally, it's a great thing. It's, you know, kind of a funny thing when you talk to people from other states where maybe they're not as prioritized, but here we rescue them, we love them. We provide all kinds of things for you to be a good mommy, daddy, dog owner. So yeah, it's a thing here. Funny thing number five is a lot of people say, let's go to the beach right here in the Oregon coast. <laughs> it's not a beach, it is a coast. There is a vast difference in a beach and a coast. When you think of a beach, you think of somewhere kind of warm that you can lay on the you know, sand, you can go in the water, you have all these water sports and you can really enjoy you know, the activities at a beach. Well, it's a little different here in the Oregon area. A lot of people, when they go to the beach, you shouldn't say beach, you should say coast. It's always cold at the beach. Even on a really nice day, there's usually a ton of wind. In fact, I was there a year ago. We took the dog, we went down to the, the coast and it was a beautiful day. It was actually a very warm day, even as uh, at the coast. However, there was a ton of wind to the point where it made it really, really cold. So again, you had to put on like a jacket or something just to kind of, um, beat the wind chill and you know we sat in the sand for a little bit it was nice but it was so cold we couldn't stick around that long people were flying kites are there people that get in the water sure but usually the water temperature is absolutely frigid we highly recommend if you're going to get into you know sports at the coast surfing is one of them you're definitely going to be wearing uh, appropriate garments in the water to keep you from freezing because it doesn't matter what time of the year it is it doesn't matter how warm it is out the coast is always cold and usually in the winter months or during off seasons it is usually a lot of rain, a lot of fog. It's got kind of that, you know, warm and cozy feeling. Like a lot of times people go down to the coast and they kind of walk around the shops and it's cold. And so you go in for like a hot, you know, cup of clam chowder at Moe's or somewhere. And you're, you, it is still really beautiful. I mean, no matter what the season is, it's always very pretty down at the coast, but 
it's usually a cold weather activity to go to the coast. I mean, you're lucky if you can find one of those really rare days where it is both warm at the coast and it's actually warm to be out on the, out on the, uh, you know, the beach. Occasionally that can happen, but usually the wind factor kind of kicks up or the water's too cold. And so it's not really like a typical beach experience, but yeah, don't think that the Oregon coast is anywhere, you know, like tropical to go visit. It is far from that. Okay. The sixth thing that is kind of funny about Portland and this really stands out if you've lived in an area before moving to Portland or visiting Portland is our fashion. <laughs> um, we're not known for like really dressing up. Uh, in fact, you probably will make people feel really uncomfortable if you're really dialed in and you're wearing like, you know, uh, a suit and a tie or you're really dressed to the nine. For business, it's business casual. So people wear like jeans and a blazer or a t-shirt a lot. But general fashion of Portland is we wear a lot of vests. Um, we talk about that in other videos. I wear a lot of vests. I think vests are the perfect attire for Portland because you can be cold or warm and it still kind of does the trick and that you can have thicker or lighter vests. But then we have the Portland fashion that is like more of the extreme. Like you see a lot of people walking around and maybe what looks like their pajamas. That's the best way to describe it. Or you see a lot of people wearing hoodies. You know, they wear a lot of big baggy sweaters, hoodies. You just see a lot of clothes that don't maybe aren't, aren't fitted on people. And so we're just not known for our fashion. So you can see a whole array of different types of fashion here in Portland when you kind of travel around and kind of see what people do. But in general, we're just a very comfortable, casual dressing culture here in Portland. I would say, like I mentioned, the business casual, a lot of us who work we're wearing jeans a lot or pants because obviously it's colder weather and we wear a lot of vests. We wear, you know, a um, couple layers typically at a time so we can pull one layer off if it gets a little warm during the day. But then you just see people that look really comfortable, <laughs> comfortable in pajamas or things that look, you know, like maybe they should be at home lounging around, not necessarily out and about. But yeah, we're just not known for our fashion sense. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. I think a lot of it has to do with it's really the weather kind of dictates some of that. Um, we do sometimes see people wear shorts when the weather gets in the 50s and 60s, because for us that's considered getting warmer. And some people will, will wear flip flops and you know be very comfortable in that, that you know, temperature with that on. But in general, we're just not, you know, we're just, we're not really dressed up around here. <laughs> okay, number seven is, and I've talked about this in another video or two, is when it snows, get ready to lock down and hunker down. So when they say there's gonna be snow of any kind, you will see everyone race to the grocery store and buy up everything on the shelves. It's a madhouse, it's a zoo at the grocery store. Because something about Portland that's kind of funny is that yes, we don't get a lot of snow, but when we do, the whole city shuts down. We get into total chaos mode. Part of that is understandable because we have a lot of hills and so we can ice up really fast in a lot of parts of Portland and it gets really hard to drive around or get home or leave your house. And a lot of those side roads do not get touched by any snow equipment. So you have to wait for it to melt. And even in my case, where I live on a very steep hill and I have a steep driveway and everything around here is on a hill and I'm on a side road, I don't typically leave my house until things are unfrozen enough to safely get out. So it could be totally fine on the main roads and literally totally fine down where you know, you're driving around on the highways and freeways, but there can be people literally stuck in their houses for days until things start to defrost because they don't have snow plows coming down and trying to break up the snow or the ice. And ice is really our nemesis here in Portland. So typically when it snows or we get freezing rain, we're all hunkering down for a while because we just don't have the uh, resources to go around all the side streets and everything and clear them out. They always focus on the freeways and the main highways and the main roads. And by the time they get to all of those, now we're starting to you know, melt and now we can all sort of kind of leave our houses. But yeah, it's a whole thing. Like when we get a weather report that says we are gonna have snow, ice or any of those things, it is, you know, get ready to stay at home. We've had some situations over the last few years where we had an ice storm that they were kind of predicting was coming. They told everybody, you know, this is happening. And literally within two and a half hours as the snow came down, everything started to change quickly. And people were literally taking four or five hours just to drive home, even if it was only like five miles away, it was nuts. So 
Yes, when we get ice and snow, it's not a lot. It's kind of funny, honestly, because you'll see a few inches outside, but it can literally take down our whole city. So just, you've been warned. Okay, tip number eight is kind of a funny one because we've talked about the weather, we don't see a lot of sun, and a lot of people are low on vitamin D. So I'm not a doctor, I'm not here to tell you what to take, but I am on vitamin D. I know a lot of my friends and colleagues are on vitamin D. It's a supplement that obviously helps you when you don't see a lot of the natural sunlight giving you vitamin D. So just know that you should be aware if your vitamin D levels start to decline when you live in the Pacific Northwest, it's because we just don't see a lot of sun. And you know, it's important to make sure you stay on top of that because vitamin D helps with a lot of systems in our, a lot of functionality inside of our bodies. And I feel a lot better when my vitamin D levels are high, so I definitely supplement with vitamin D. Okay, the funny thing about number nine is it kind of is along the same lines as our fashion, but it's with our cars. So somehow, some way, when people move here, they buy a Subaru. Subaru is like the car that you see on the road everywhere in the Portland area, probably in the Pacific Northwest in general, but there's something about a Subaru. And I've even had clients that move here and they buy a Subaru. In fact, I have one client who <laughs> confessed they bought a Subaru. I think the reason why Subarus are so popular here is number one, they're really great cars to own because it's great for kind of all seasons. You know, a lot of them are great for going to the mountains and taking around. They're very industrious type cars. But there's just something about a Subaru that s says you're now officially a Portlander. And so when you come to Portland, all you see are Subarus everywhere. It's probably our number one car that, you know, represents, it's like the state car almost, or the, the city car. But yeah, Subarus, it's a thing here. Um, everybody seems to drive one. And uh, if you want to get initiated into the Portland life, well, then you're going to probably see yourself looking at Subarus. <laughs> Okay, and the 10th thing, I saved it for last because to me it's the funniest thing. And I have noticed that I haven't really seen this in other parts of the country. And I've asked uh, some friends and family that live throughout the country if this happens to them in their city. And they've all said, no, they've never seen it. But you will see items outside of somebody's house or on the corner of a street. What does that mean? It means it's free. It means you can take it. We constantly drive by, somebody will put a couch outside of their house on the sidewalk. And that is the universal sign for take it, it's yours, free of charge. <laughs> or you'll see furniture, or you'll see goods, or you'll see home goods, or you'll see whatever on the, the side of the street or at a corner where maybe a lot of traffic goes by. And that is, hey, if you want it, if you need it, take it, it's yours. And by golly, You'll see it there in the morning and it'll be gone by the afternoon. It's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like always cracks me up because somebody will put their personal belongings on the side of the street and somebody will pick it up and take it home. Hey, I guess that's, you know, storefront right there. If there's a lot of traffic going by, you know, people are wanting to see, you know, uh, if they can just, you know, get rid of it more easily than trying to put it on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or drive it down to the Goodwill but I always find it, it just cracks me up. I think it's just a Portland thing or maybe a Pacific Northwest thing, I don't know. We have a lot of rain, so whenever I see somebody put something like a couch out there, I'm always like, ah, oh, you know, it's gonna get all rained on. Typically, it's, you know, when the weather's a little drier, but in general, people who put things on the sidewalks, the corners of the streets or out in front, that's your sign if you want it. How about it? So those were the top 10 funny, quirky things about Portland that I wanted to share. If you're thinking about making a move to the Portland metro area, and if that is you and you're looking to make a move out here, all of our contact information is in the description below. We'd love to hop on a phone call with you and talk about helping you make a smooth transition to the Portland area. See you on the next video.